y'all know what's going on, wrestling fans, wrestling fans. You know what time it is. It's Thursday night, so that means it's time for the team there, wrestling fans. I'm your boy, your host, Big Red, all the way from the Big D, Dallas, Texas. As always, I have with me my boy, my super producer, all the way from Cali. Show some Cali love for LC We Need to Go. What's going on, bro? What's up? And as always, I got my co-host with me. Hey, from all the way from the Big PA, show love for my boy Big Ant. Where you at? What's up? How y'all doing tonight? All right, first of all, before we get into it, hey, I would like to uh, apologize to people out there that have been asking about the show, where it's been the past couple of weeks. We haven't been able to do it, had technical difficulties, but hey, we're back tonight doing this. And always, WCC would like to remind you to support your local indie scene, get your ass in the seat somewhere. <clears throat> all right, first of all, I want to start off by congratulating all of the winners from TNA Slammiversary this past week, the new. The new um, TV champ, Abyss, the new X Division champ, Chris Saban, the new tag champs, the Cowboys, James Storm and Gunner, and Bully Ray for retaining his championship. I love to especially give it up to the women, Gail Kim and the lovely Terrence Terrell for putting on one of a hell of a knockout's last standing match. That was one hell of a match. <clears throat> all right, all right. And, um... Hey, I'm, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and let you uh, let let you get this one right here. Uh, you want me to take the reins tonight again? All right, no problem. Yes, sir. All right, uh, <laughs> tonight's episode of uh, Impact Wrestling started off with Hulk Hogan coming out, and of course it came up to a thunderous ovation. There was even somebody in the crowd that had a sign that said that they waited 27 years to see Hulk Hogan. Hey, I can understand. I've never seen him live myself, but uh. He, he comes out and he says the last week could have been a lot worse for Bully Ray because he was about to tag him with that hammer, but his daughter stopped him from doing anything. He says that Bully Ray caused enough trouble, but that it's time to start. What he wanted to talk about was the Bound for Glory, so like where there's selections for the Bound for Glory series coming up, which I feel is a very important series that they have, and makes their matches seem so much more important. So everybody's wrestling for that chance to be the number one contender. He talks about all the guys that are in it, like Samoa Joe and a few of the others, and then he brings out Jeff Hardy. And Jeff Hardy comes out saying that he's sick of aces and ace and that he's going to win the Bound for Glory series again. Next person to come out also is Bobby Roode, who had won the Bound for Glory series the year before, saying that he's going to win it and that he's going to have another historic, he's going to have another great historic title reign like the one he had before because, after all, he was the longest reigning TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Then after that uh, outcome, then uh, actually what happens next is Hogan says that uh, next week that Rude, I believe that Rude and Hardy are going to have a match and that the Vans are going to do some voting. I don't know. They kind of confused me there. If somebody backed me up. Nobody. So the thing is, oh uh, yeah, okay. uh, you want me to take this one, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. take this. Yeah. Okay, yeah, go I'll ahead, go right ahead. Um, uh, pretty much the voting is this open fight night. Um, you can pretty much vote on Twitter or on their website. Um, whichever wrestler gets the highest vote will get to call out any wrestler they want. And Rude pretty much said he wants to win so he can call out Jeff Hardy and kick his ass. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. All right. Because, you know, guys, they got, when Hogan talked, he just made it sound all confusing, more confusing than it should have been. Maybe that's what yeah. they need to get their own ass. Well, we know who's going to be Rick always... anyway. We know who's winning the vote. Okay. Right. <laughs> but then uh, Bully Ray came out and says that it doesn't matter who wins the tournament because whoever wins has to face him. And then he says that he has a big problem. He's also upset because nobody from Ace of the Nation was selected to be in the tournament. Of course, uh, Hulk Hogan says that he wants the members of Aces and Ace to have a battle royal to decide who gets that spot in the Bound for Glory series. Mm-hmm. Holy Ray says it's typical Hulk, it doesn't matter who's in because they're all going to be a target of Aces and Ace. Which it makes me wonder, why would you be talking about who's going to fight you, but then you also got mad because nobody from your group was in it? <laughs> what if one of them win, you know what I mean? Right. I mean, uh, 
Let's see. And then after that, uh, Bully threatens to rush to ring and beat them up, but they all come back and then uh, Rude attacks Hardy from behind and leaves the ring after saving off Ace and Ace real quick, which I thought was, you know, a sneaky, sneaky move by Rude, but hey, we're talking about the world title. There are no friends. Then next we had a bad influence hanging out backstage. What was, what was he doing? Playing on the piano, just hitting one key at a time? Yeah, that mm-hmm. Daniels. Hey, hey, I said it at WCC, but hey, don't these two remind you of like a um, Billy and Chuck, but just not as suspect as they are? Right. They are? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My little brother was watching with me today, and he was like, yeah, "Negro, that's all you had to say." My little brother was watching earlier, and he was looking at him. He said, "Hey, are they supposed to be?" I'm like, "I don't think." I'm like, "They're like metrosexual." Right. But, you know, they were talking about James Storm being a tag team champion again, how he always does it with a new partner, of course, making some jokes there. And then they make fun of Gunner and his beard. They said it scares right. these really. And they said tonight they said that the advantage is going to be in their favor because Hulk Hogan's going to help them out tonight because they're going to have a tag match against. It's going to be bad influence going up against Gunner and James Storm, where the winning team, both members of that winning team, used to be in the Bound for Glory series. It what trips me out was Daniel was like, you know, at the end at the end of the uh at the end of the Battle for Glory series one of them is gonna be wearing the uh the title around their what what he say their gorgeous waist? I'm like, really dude? Damn. I'm like, if that wasn't if that wasn't Billy and Chuck, I don't know what the hell that was. Uh, let's not talk about Billy and Chuck anymore, please. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna have a wedding on an episode of Impact. Let's hope oh. not. Oh, Lord. Yeah, we only had one bad wedding on TNA. <laughs> we all know what wedding angles never get over. We already know that. And then we had uh, the tag match between Bad Influence and James Storm and Gunner, who clearly don't have the name for their team yet. Beers and guns. Or beer gunners, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And it was a decent back and forth match. Uh, wait, let's see how did this match finish. Uh, Storm tried to, and tried, yeah, tried to hit Daniels with the last call before dropping. He dropped his area with one, but when he sets up the last call, Daniels, of course, does a sneaky thing, hits him with the belt. Kaz steals the win with the roll up, and that influence gets Kaz, Kazarian, and Daniels get their spot in the Battle for Glory series. I thought it was an all right match. Uh, what'd you guys think? Yeah, it was a pretty good match. I, I enjoyed it. Not bad, but I, I noticed during the match, it feels like Gunner and Stone don't have that chemistry yet. I no, like they, but... No, they mm, don't, but... I, they I always, don't? I, I always enjoy watching Cass and Daniels together. They're a fucking true. Yeah, those guys are good, but the thing about them, too, is that they're good whether it's as a tag team, but they're also good singles competitors, too. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm... I mean, the biggest the, the biggest problem is that, I mean, who has Gunner really actually been able to build a tag team rapport with? I mean, he spent most of his time as an enforcer in Immortal, and he usually did it solo. James Storm, he's pretty much been, you know, I mean, he's pretty much the, epitom- the, the epitome. If you basically are trying to create a tag team in TNA, he's the guy you would, you, you would want, want leading that charge. I mean, three three different teams, three three tag team titles. I mean, in all honesty, Gunner hasn't really had had that legitimate shot, but I think it's with a little more time and a, time and a, and a little, little, little more more work. I expect to see pretty much. I, I expect to see see this team actually be as dominant as dominant as they look because they're both tough and they're both strong and they both got some skills on them. But Absolutely. I mean, right? And, you know, they in the, and they tried to you know do the tag team thing with him with the other dude Murphy, but they they let him go. Yeah, he wasn't right. really, he wasn't really a total well, loss. Yeah, with Murphy. He wasn't really. Yeah, he wasn't really catching on anyway. But then again, neither was Gunner. When I saw that he was still employed, I'm like, hey, that guy's still working there. But putting him with James Storm is the best thing you can do for him right now. All right. I will say yeah. this. Um, I like James Storm. Um, but if this don't work, I want to say after five months, if it still doesn't seem like they're connecting in the ring, you got to drop the belt so get Storm somebody else because. We know in this business sometimes tag teams work, and other times, yeah, we should have just never did it. Right, right. 
So our next thing we had was a sight for sore eyes. Crimson was backstage. <laughs> and oh I was my. like, yeah, we're going to have to see Crimson. Crimson. At first, I didn't recognize him because I wasn't paying attention. I looked up and said, what the fuck? He's been gone for a whole year. What the hell? Yeah, he was um, backstage, and a crew member was asking him who was going back there, and he says that nobody has seen You know, it's been a year since they've seen him, and uh, he can't believe they want to know about him. And he says that uh, don't worry about where he's been or why he's here. And then he just leaves into the room, and he goes to commercial. When he comes back from the break, he's in the ring. And he says, you know, he's been going for a long time, and he's talking all about how he was undefeated for 470 days. Yeah, he did have a nice undefeated streak. And that it ended a year ago whenever James Storm had beaten him. But he said that he wants to redeem himself in the Bound for Glory series. But who's his opponent? None other than Joseph Park. Man, I don't even want to talk what? about this, man. Uh, <laughs> Joseph Park. Can I just ask, should we even talk about this match? Because... Right when Joseph Pokes came in, I think we all knew who was winning this one, unless you were blind as a bat. What you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? What you, what you, what you, what you okay. talking about, huh? My thing okay. with this is, this is my thing with this. This dude... Wait, was well, that sit, a poke here, Y'all sent this dude <laughs> back down to OVW for a whole year to get some more training, to change up his gimmick, and all this shit, and y'all bring him back in his first match back, y'all fucking make him job to Joseph Park. And that's what I said. I said, this guy hasn't been on TV in a whole year. And they had him whoop Joseph Park throughout, what, the whole match, and then Joseph Park did the sneaky roll-up for the win. I'm like, but you, are they, are they, if, if I'm booking TNA and I have somebody like Crimson who was, at, who was pretty over with the fans, and I liked him, if he hasn't been back for a year... He's going to win that first night back. Because if he doesn't, he ends up just looking like some goof up off the street. Right. you got to iron your stripes. Yeah. Oh, bull. He has until, little... you are, until you iron your stripes, you're still a leopard. Hey. <laughs> wow. that, that's, why they, that's why he got sent back down to OVW to earn his stripes. <laughs> earn his stripes, but they have wait, your... wait, 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 wait. That's pause. That's Paul's thing, isn't it? Why are you playing it for me? Dang oh, my bad. Uh, the thing is, the thing is, he's actually it, it's, not. It's, it's, it's not. It's not the point that he lost. Is that who the goofy character that he lost too? I'm like, really? So now you right. want to take him seriously after he just lost to Joseph Park? Are you fucking serious? Yeah, nobody's gonna take him seriously after that. Now, if they'd had him lose to like Kurt Angle, okay. No. No, no, no. Oh, the wow. problem, the problem, the problem with this Crimson thing is that he changed nothing. He changed nothing. He pretty much sat here and went down to OBW. The only thing he changed was that he came out in his camo gear with his vintage Crimson Co- Co- Coalition BS, and he pretty much did the same thing he did last year. Came out cocky, bold, arrogant, but he went back to talking about, I was undefeated for 470 days. Give yourself a fucking cookie, shut the fuck up, and show us if you learned anything different. No, he came in there doing the same shit he was doing last year. Wait, is that CM Punk? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm at it. Mm. You're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) I got an opinion about doing the same. I just want to know. I just want to know. I just want to know who's booking this bullshit. Who would you? I mean, honestly, this was this was something that pretty much they, they they had to just throw in at the last minute. They had to, they, 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 that's what it, what it looked like. They literally threw this match in at the last damn minute. I mean, you couldn't have Joseph Park beat, like, Shark Boy or somebody? You, would, you, mm. would you have really Shark wanted Boy. Shark Boy in the Bound for Glory series? He or for that matter, been, that... Park would have yeah. beaten him, so it wouldn't matter. True. Is, Rock, is he that... wasn't going to be in it either, because he, he was going to get beat. You already know who was going to lose the match. Yeah, but this was like one of those underdog things that basically showed that anything is possible in the BFG series. I guess that's what they were going for, that anybody and everybody could be in this series. And Joseph Park was that quintessential underdog. I don't expect him to do anything big, but that was that was, that was was what they were, they were going for. It's like Crimson pretty much had this guy overmatched from top to bottom, should have easily easily had won, that, won this match within three minutes, and Joseph Park rolls him up and picks up an upset win. Underdog. That's true. That's true. I, got 
I want to throw this question out for you. Shoot. Okay. Since we know Joseph Polk's it, it thing, didn't we all, some of us, call out a slam of us we that Abyss would win the TV title? How much yeah, would have been to replace him with Abyss? Damn. What, it's Bound for Glory series? Yeah, they're going to replace him with Abyss. Well, they're supposed to be two different people, so they really can't. Not, not, at least not for the Bound for Glory series. Unless Justin Park gets hurt somewhere in between there or ambushed again, they got to put in a last-minute replacement. Right, yes. Now, if they decide to do it that way, and maybe they say, okay, we'll put a bit in its place, then yeah, I mean, it works for the TV title, but I'm thinking that they're going to have Justin Park do the Bound for Glory stuff while Abyss continues to defend the TV title. Yeah. Let's see, what happened next? Next, we had uh, Velvet Sky head into the ring. So I'm mm. she has some things to say that, yeah, she was looking good tonight. So I'm mm. she has some to say that, uh, Mickey James, that they've been on shaky ground. And hey. And, what, she had a, what, she had a, she had a number up in her hand? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and hey, hey, because I, I, Taz don't say it no more, I had to say, let the pigeons loose. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, giggity, giggity. Pull your pants up. Oops. Oh, no, I'm, uh, I'm wearing a short. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's summer. I'm not going to not gonna be wearing pants in the summer. Shit. Let's see, uh, Velvet, you know, she came to the ring and everything, and out came Mickey James. And she says, you know, she's like, well, you know, Velvet, you were a knockout in a month, but, she, but you know, that's not important because it's about winning, about being the knockout champion. So Velvet cut her off, and she gave her the piece of paper, and it was, I, think, I believe it was for their rematch clause. But Mickey says that uh, anybody can make up one of those contracts online. And then, uh, and then the lady yeah, I thought it was funny. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love this thing. I love it. I love it because Mickey was like, you know, you see, Mickey was like, you see right here, it says, it says, uh, this was yesterday, and it looked like to me your knee still hurt today. I was <laughs> like, her. Like, her. Her. <laughs> her. Her. I was like, <laughs> Okay. Well, well, we're sitting talking about that one. I got one question I've kind of noticed. Is it, is it just me or is Mickey James decided to stop wearing the push-up bra she was wearing in WWE? Because her chest oh. has gotten, gotten smaller since she's been in TNA. Hmm. Hate it. <laughs> did you just say she got an extra fag? Oh, oh. <laughs> That's all right. I still slow them down. I mean, what? Oh, what? <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> wow. Good uh, uh, Matt Morgan I'm was... Sorry, well, then we had a next segment. We had Matt Morgan all angry. He talked about, I'll do all this stuff just to get a shot at the title. And now i got to be in this match so I can get in, be in the Battle for Glory series. You know, because Matt Morgan all pissed off. He came out wearing... So garbage. Came out wearing that Hulk Hogan Technicolor dream coat, which I don't know. <laughs> Hulk Hogan, you're there every week. Why don't you try to get your coat back? But Just Because Hulk Hogan's third. You're missing like you the Hulk, Hulk Hogan Technicolor dream coat. Technicolor <laughs> dream I was just saying, like, in the middle of the match, you can't uh, just go snatch it off the of SoCal Val or something or have her bring it to the back for you. I mean, yeah, that, was, that was very disrespectful, sir. And that's coming from no. me. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Hey, uh, so just, uh, I mean, it, it, it's actually pretty bad that Matt Morgan's got this whole thing where he's wearing this Hulk Hogan set the color dream coat, and he's wearing Daniel Bryan's beard on top of it. It's rather yeah. disturbing. One of the Dark Dynasty beards. <laughs> <laughs> then we get uh, the four-way match with uh, Matt Morgan, Kenny King, Rob Perry, and Magnus, where the winner gets to be in the Bound for Glory series. Uh-oh. And in, the, in this oh, match, in this Ooh, match we, had, I... we had Shades of the British Invasion. Uh-oh. Who? Yeah, who? Whose idea was it to put Kenny King in this fucking match? He's <laughs> going crack. Seriously, oh, wait, Magnus? Magnus? 
you got Magnus and Rob, Magnus Rob Terry and Matt Morgan, all pretty much bona fide heavyweights guys who pretty much can throw can throw little X division guys around and pretty much still not break a sweat. You put a little ass Kenny King in a match with a seven 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 foot goat wearing a technicolor dream coat. <laughs> a guy who pretty a, a guy who has seven hundred wow. different hairstyles, but yet they all look the same. And a guy who pretty much looks like he just pencils in his beard every damn night. And yet they all Wait. look pissed. They all can beat the shit out of somebody. But yet you're gonna put him, you're gonna put this little ass X division X division guy in there, thinking that he's gonna put some flair into it or what? Wait a minute, Daniel Bryan was there too. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I got it. <laughs> hey, hey, don't tell nobody, but I think it's because he's black. The important thing, though, well, not only was he in there, but he took the pinfall, too. Magnus pinned Kenny King to get the win. Wow. It was an alright match, too, you know what I mean? But, it was, I mean, I've seen better four way matches, but, you know, it got kind of confusing after a while. Right. Matt Morgan hit a carbon foot prank. He somehow makes it out, gets out of the ring, and in just enough time for Magnus to hit King with the inverted spike slam for the win. So Magnus mm-hmm. is now in the Bound for Glory series. Well, there was only two things wrong with this, and it wasn't even the match because the match was decent. It was the two things about it bad. One, why the fuck did we have to miss Magnus? Well, I'll tell you, Kenny King coming in the ring, but Matt Morgan gets this. this Great fucking entrance out of nowhere. And two, was it just new? Did it feel like it was Gonzella versus Mecha Gonzella versus Chuck, a very bad wannabe Chuck Norris versus one of the midgets from the Lollipop Guild? Yeah, it was. Wait, 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 wait. Hold a second. Which one of those guys is from the Lollipop Oh, Which one of those guys yourself. is from the Lolly? Is is, is from the Lollipop Guild? Which one? Kenny King. He, he okay, there you cool. go. Man, we're just hating Kenny King tonight, aren't we? Damn. We welcome you. We're climbing all over Kenny King. If Kenny King was in a four-way X Division match that had a BFG style line, it probably would have been a little more marketable. But there was no way. There was no way they were, they were, they were going to put two uh, two underdogs in this B, BFG series and make it make it sell so sell. This wasn't going to happen. It was either going to be King or it was going to be, sadly enough, Joseph Park. Turns out, apparently, Joseph Joseph, Joseph Park pulled that ace of, ace of spades too. So there you go. All right, all right. Next thing, what do we have next? We had a thing coming out because everybody wanted to know what Sting's future was going to be after losing that match. Yeah, Sting. buddy. And of course, mm-hmm. Sting, uh, Sting, what was Sting? And he's down there in Atlanta in this old WCW country, so of course he gets a hometown ovation, even though, you know, because WCW is his home area. Talk about how great it was to be back in Atlanta, how he was the first man inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame. But he said, you know, this year hasn't been great. You know, he, he'd been shooting on Bully Bay a few times. He failed to get his, he failed with his title shot at Slam Anniversary. And he says that aces and aces are finally tuned machine, and that they're like a family, so he needs to make his own family. But of course, you know, Sting was mad because nobody came out and helped him during that match. He says that his own family he needs people he can trust. He says he needs a mafia, and yeah. that means, so now we're going to get the new main event mafia. My so question now, is, who's going to be? Wait, wait, wait! I have no question too. You probably have the same question. Yeah. What's your who, who in the hell is he going to get to be in it? Right. I was like, there's something that you're missing, Sting. You're missing main eventers. Exactly. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Before y'all start pouncing on this whole Emmy return, return to mob, mafia idea, he didn't tell us exactly if he was going to get it from TNA. He didn't say here. Pretty much there's a lot of superstars out there that pretty much haven't been seen in a while. And there has been no reports on their science with WWE, no science on their thoughts with TNA. There are some people out there that may say they're shocking. Hell, maybe Rampage will be will, will be, be in this mafia. He's pretty, pretty much a main eventer. Hasn't really pledged any allegiance to anybody. Yeah, the but UFC he much, main eventer. Yeah, he's a UFC main eventer. Like, who's going to yeah, who's the worst main eventer is that? He can't 
And then the thing about it is, is that whoever's going to be in it, it can't be anybody that's already in the TNA roster because everybody on the well, TNA roster left him hung out the drive during that match at anniversary, so it wouldn't make sense. Well, I got a theory on one of the members, and I'm, I'll explain. Uh, he, hasn't been on t- he hasn't been on t- TNA TV in a while, but he still has a contract with him. Who's been a main eventer? Who's been champion? Who? Oh, are we talking about the whole that and show? Yeah, because remember, he has he's still on the TNA roster technically. True, true. I thought his contract was up because he was he's been doing independent appearances. So, but it's possible. It's definitely possible. So that's why I was like, who's going to be in this? Who's going to be in this? Who's, who's the main eventer that's going to make up his mafia? Okay, how oh, about... Well, oh, well, if, if, if he's going to be in there, they're, they're fucked because he's lazy. Jeff Jarrett? Why <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Van Damme? But main eventer, Jeff Jarrett, I guess you can get Rob Van Damme and Jeff Jarrett and... Somehow he'll forgive Kurt Angle for not coming out to help him because Kurt will be like, I was real hurt from my match with AJ Styles, man. I couldn't be there. Some shit. No, sorry. Sorry <laughs> sorry to disappoint you, but there will be no reunions whatsoever as far as the original. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. Kurt Angle, Kurt Angle's the only one left out of the original main event mafia. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I mean, who else, who, who else could possibly sit here and fill, fill that void? What's Scott Steiner doing these days? Nothing. <laughs> oh, okay. he, he ain't going back to TNA. Oh, yeah, hell he no. Did talk, he talked mad shit on Hogan there. That motherfucker does not like Hogan for shit. He, and the thing is, he said a whole bunch of stuff, and nobody's, nobody's going to talk shit back to Scott Steiner because they'll fuck you up. So, so, anyway, you know, as he says that the new main event mafia is going to take aces and eights down and all that. The next thing we get is uh, Eric Young, who was getting ready for <laughs> he was about to have his match with Austin Aries. But before that, he was showing, he was uh, hawking his TV show that he's been hosting, which I, I think that's cool. It's good, that he, it's good to have other side projects. He was at some bar that I want to go to where the bars. What a big exactly. block of ice. Yeah, the bars make of ice. I want to go exactly. there. Yeah, I do too. It's in Minnesota? Yeah. yeah well, no, man, I'm, I'm trying to go up in there. The, the, yeah, ODB goes and tackles them and all that crazy stuff because, you know, they're still married. I guess, you know, I, I forgot all about it. Well, I think too, man. I think everybody did. And yeah. this match was the Marys, what was cool is during this match, there was some comedy from the, you know, you get a goofy face going up against a bad guy that while he's supposed to be an asshole, he can be pretty funny too. Because you saw where he did the little thing where he was spinning around on him and everything, smacked him in the head and hopped in the corner and, and sat up there and then ODP came in the ring and EY did the same thing to her. I thought that was pretty good, but of course... Yeah. Uh, of course, you knew, we knew what was going to happen. Austin Aries went up in there, got the win on Eric Young and Austin. And yeah. Was this a qualifying match? Yeah, yeah it, it was. was. Was this a qualifier? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this... mm-hmm. yeah. You know what? I, 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 was, I was happy to see EY back in action. I mean, despite this dude comedic shit, the dude is fucking awesome in the ring. He, he yeah, has skills. And he got that big win over uh, Aces and Aces back at... Uh, what pay was it? The Genesis? No, Lockdown? Lockdown. Yeah, off, yeah off the top of the page, And it's like everybody forgets that he helped his team win. And I thought that he was going to get a push after that, but he hasn't. But he's been busy, too, so it's all good. And then we yeah. had the main event, or we, I'm sorry, I got main event mafia on the brain now. Then we had Aces Uh-oh. and Aces back. They're sitting there having their meeting, talking about what they're going to do in the Battle Royal. Like, you know, are you all in? They're all saying, yeah. You, and you see, when they get to Doc, he kind of hesitates. But then yeah, he says, yeah. Doc was pissed. I'm like, uh, he don't look too he happy. He kind of knew what this. was going on. He wants to title him. Right, because he's looking at it and saying, I might be part of this group, but I still want me a shot at the title. I want to be champ. Who doesn't want to be the champ? And then, exactly. they did, and then they did the Battle Royal, which you heard the crowd just boot him straight out of the building during that. <laughs> Right. Did you know, was fake throwing everybody out of the ring and 
then it came time for Doc, and Doc said, hell, I don't know, I'm going to fight you for a bit. I'm not going to just give you the win. But he ends up getting, but then he ends up getting tossed out anyway. And you see all them talk about, you know, what are you doing? And Mr. Anderson wins the Battle Royal, and he gets the spot in the Bound for Glory series. I would have honestly wanted to see Doc in that BFG than Anderson because it would be nice to actually see some more, see, see some more new blood. I want to see the other guys. It seems like all they've been doing is just protecting, protecting Bully Ray, and that's it. I mean, is it, is it just the fact that Anderson just happens to be at the right place at the right time every time Bully's about to get his ass kicked? Maybe. But honestly, <laughs> they, should have, they, should have, they should have just given, give, given that, that shot to Doc. I think so too, because it would have created if he'd have if he'd have tossed Mr. Anderson out, it would have created an even different internal storyline with an internal struggle between them. They're mad at him right now, but Mr. Anderson still won the match. Yeah, had I gotta he, vote. Oh, I'll let you go first. What I was gonna say is, had he not won, had Doc, what if Doc would have won the battle royal? It would have been an even bigger story. Right. So I mm-hmm. see Doc the one. <clears throat> I guess apparently, apparently they drew cards to see who was going to win the battle royal. Because Anderson yeah. was back there was saying, if I, you know, if you had your, you know, if I had your record, I would have did the same thing, you know? Right, right. It, it would be me going over the top rope and not you. And then, of course, uh, you know, we see them all in the back and they're, you know, yelling at Doc, like, hey, you know, Doc, what were you doing? And all that. But, yeah, there were two problems with this match. One, it just felt stupid. I mean, seriously, the way the people were eliminated was just dumb. I mean, a fake gun? Come on. And, yeah, I'm with the one who said Doc should have won. Yeah, because here's the problem. Mr. Anderson, Kennedy, whatever you want to fucking call him, this guy gets so injured so many times. I wouldn't be surprised if we find out next week he broke his nail arm. Or broke a nail. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, you talk about Anderson being injury prone. Yeah. yeah, he pretty much is. That's why it's the, that's why that's why he got booted out of WWE because he kept getting hurt all the damn time. But then, but while he's been in TNA, he hasn't been hurt as much. No, he hasn't. Hasn't been hurt. He's he's been on a lot a lot of hiatus. I mean, granted, granted. He was on hiatus last time because creative didn't have anything for him, so they just kept him off TV until they could find something. It wasn't due to injury. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Hold a second. You're telling me that basically create, creative didn't have anything for Anderson, but yet they keep pulling, pulling Joseph Park out of their ass? Yeah, they didn't have anything for him. Before they put him in Aces and Eights, Mr. Anderson was at home because creative couldn't find anything for him. No, because he was injured. But still, Andrew, he's always going to be known as the guy as a wrestler who was injury prone. I mean, that's a fact. I mean, in WWE he was there, but in TNA he hasn't really been injured that much. I don't think no, he has. Any time well, off for like he, no, in fact, he, he's been pretty consistent here in TNA. I mean, but it should have still been Doc. It would have made more sense. Oh yeah, I just don't think Anderson. Been Anderson has no shot. At least Doc would have had a shot at winning the thing. Anderson, oh hell no. The only way Anderson pretty much wins this series is pretty much aces and ace just takes over the whole damn thing. And the way that the way that Hogan is feeling, I kind of get a feeling that he's going to do everything in his power to make sure that does that does not happen. You know, there's only one way Mr. Anderson's winning it, and that's if everybody comes down with a case of leukemia. Or a case of crabs. Or a real bad case of diarrhea. <laughs> well, they go they get the T virus. Well, uh, diseases aside, uh, no, right God! Before, no, uh, God, please, no! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> we had, uh, Kurt Angle and Rampage Jackson having a bit of a conversation. You know, he's talking about, well, you know, Rampage, if you're going to be in here, you know, if you're going to step into my arena, you know, you got to learn to wrestle. Basically, what he was basically telling him, you know, you got to learn to do what we do. Right. And, of course, all the hype that they've been making about Rampage coming to TNA, which right. I don't think it's a bad idea because MMA fighters coming into pro wrestling is old hat at this point, so, you know, who cares? Right. I actually even wrote about it last week for, my, for the kayfabekickout.com website. I mean, 
I mean, hell, I mean, look at Ken Shamrock. He, he made that transition. Yeah, he, and was, he was damn good at it. A no, lot of guys for the Ken Shamrock dance over. Alberto Del Rio was an MMA fighter when he was wrestling down in Mexico as Joe Strauss Jr. Yeah. If you go online on, and go look up Pride where he got his head knocked off by Marco Krokop. It's there. But yeah, a lot of a lot of guys, and it's real big over in Japan. A lot of those Japanese wrestlers went ahead and gave tries to MMA also. So it's it's something that happens more often than not because the sports aren't that different. Yeah, but I want to quote Jay O on something because um, he said it when Ram, when it was announced Rampage was signed. He said this is going to be very tricky because with him with Rampage being thirty five, he kind of used the old saying it's going to be hard to teach a new do- an old dog a new trick. That's true. That's true, but as long as but if he if he takes it seriously and he dedicates his time to it, it can work. Because there's a few questions that we have: Is Rampage hey, going to? Hey. It's not like is he actually going to go on the road and wrestle? Is he going to be wrestling every week, or is he going to be mostly committed to Bellator and just making special guest appearances for TNA? Yeah, but let's just say damn many. Let's just say Cindy. Did you say thirty five was old? Treats old dog new tricks. What in the fuck? Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Oh, thank you. You said it's old. Hell no. The thing is, I hope they don't do the same thing they do with the fucking, they're doing with King Mo. King Mo's only made, what, two appearances? I don't know. I'm wondering if King Mo's maybe an afterthought after Emmanuel Newton knocked him the fuck out. You know, that brawl for all syndrome. Mm. All right. Well, I think we can all agree on this for Rampage. It's either going to go one of two ways. So it'll be like Shamrock and Dan the Beast, which will work, or B, he'll become the next Daniel Feudal. Or uh, Tank Abbott. Oh, God, I forgot Tank Abbott. Was Tank Abbott? <laughs> nah, yeah, I remember nah. him now. Thank you for the nightmares tonight. <laughs> <laughs> And we get to our main event between uh, Kurt Angle and AJ Styles. And as oh, always, this, as always, these guys had a great match. Great back and forth action. Uh, and you know, by them being Atlanta, you know the hometown boy was getting was getting the praise. Of course. Mm, let's get ready to rumble. Man, AJ, AJ Styles was pulled out shit that I ain't never seen him do. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, he was. Like, they were just going at it and so much chemistry there. Now, I mean, I kind of knew that AJ Styles was going to win because, hey, it was his turn to win. Right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's just how TNA is just like the other guys. When it comes to how guys wrestle, guys trade wins. Everybody ends up at 500 at the end of the day. Right. I mean, you know, even on commentary, they said that AJ Styles has, has switched up his his in ring, you know, his in ring stuff. He's more more aggressive now. Right. And then you saw uh, near the end of the match, Aces and Ace uh, tries to run in, and then uh, which distracted the referee and distracted Kurt Angle and there. Aces and Ace kind of ruined a pretty good, a great match between the two. And uh, But AJ Styles got the roll-up, got the pin. Then after that, Aces and Ace, they jumped in the ring to attack third angle, but Rampage Jackson came out and made the save, including the ring. Yeah, the chain with him. Yes, he yeah, had that finish yeah, chain. Yeah, he had that chain. You know, they, they were standing back-to-back. Aces and Ace was getting all shook. You know, they ran. You, know, you don't want to mess with Rampage Jackson. I'd have ran, too. All right. AJ Styles, but most importantly, AJ Styles gets the win. And this is just my I, – I feel that he's the favorite to win the Bound for Glory series. I can see him being the one to win. All right. Me too. I actually don't have AJ Styles winning. Oh, who do you have winning? I have the big Mexican, Hernandez. Oh, no. I would like to see him. Uh, he's one of those guys I would like to see him. I would, you know what? I would like to see him win it, but storyline-wise – I don't see him getting it. Well, my right. main reason is every TNA fan, hardcore one, say, oh, TNA pushes new town. I'm like, okay, AJ's been to the main event so many times. Let's put a guy who's 
rarely been in it or in there at all and make them a star. So Hernandez would be the best choice. And he could match Bubba Ray's, uh, Bully Ray's power. And you know what? People don't realize that the, the Bound for Glory concept, that this is like, for me, this is my favorite time of the year for TNA, between now and October. The Bound for Glory series is a great concept because every match that happens with the point system and everything, it makes every single match that the people are in all those matches are important. Guys aren't wrestling just to wrestle. Right. They're wrestling. It, 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 it's, like, it's like every match is relevant. Right. Every well, single match on the show means something. Well, but there really is, there oh. is actually one thing that, that pretty much sticks out for me as far as the way this lineup goes right now. The fact that the man who pretty much lost lost last year and – Lost his chance to actually get it get it done to get to get a shot shot at the world title. J Styles is now finds himself in a very good position because nobody's gonna is gonna know what what know what's exactly in his arsenal until he starts pretty much pulling it out right then and there in the ring. I see AJ Styles actually doing doing the impossible and winning winning this series because he he's he's the most unpredictable superstar superstar in this in, out, of, out of these out of these 12, 12 guys he's the most unpredictable yeah, right he, and that's he, he, he can get another he, shot to go for glory so here we go well, yeah he is cuz cuz when he first came back he bust out that damn submission move everybody was like what the fuck is this <laughs> i got an interesting question for you guys then cuz we already know we all went over our favorites who do you think the long shot is to win the series this year <laughs> Hart. Hart. <laughs> I actually think I think it's Magnus because I don't think they're gonna. I, you know, I love my boy Magnus, but I don't think they're gonna give him give him a great push in this one. Right. Even though I wouldn't mind, he's one of those guys that if you're if you're gonna start pushing some of your younger guys, start pushing guys like Magnus, and right. he's one of those guys that they can start pushing, and that they need to start pushing right. a bit more. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Just, I can see him getting a little pushing, pushing it, but he's still young, so he's still got time. Right, yeah, Magnus is still in his 20s. So yeah, he got, he got yeah, yeah, Magnus is only 26. That. He's only 26, yeah. so. I realize that he came to TNA in his early 20s. Yep. Well, just in case anybody forgets who's listening to us right now on what, however you're listening to us, the competitors are Jeff Hardy, Bobby Roode, Anderson, AJ, Kaz, Daniels, Joseph Park, Samoa Joe, Magnus, Jay, Hernandez, and Austin Aries. All right. All right. Uh, people, all right. All right. For people out there listening to it, you are listening to the TNA recipe every Thursday night, 30 minutes after impact. The number to call is 760-569-7676. Again, that number is 760-569-7676. SS code 20446 pound again 20446 pound hit that pound or you are not getting in to conversate. All right, back to you fellas. Mm, very nice. All right, well um, yeah, we we touched on a lot of things you know because we haven't been able to have a show in the last couple of weeks. Uh, what you guys think of the? I know we talked about the winners of Slammiversary. What you guys think about the show overall? I thought it was great. Slammiversary was awesome this year. It it really was. Yeah, a lot of times with TNA, even if some of their TV shows aren't great, their pay-per-views are normally pretty good. It's almost like you're watching a different company. Right. The matches are good. Even the build-up to the matches are good. And everybody played their position well that night. Unlike everybody else, I like that. The, that knockouts match was match of the night. Man, I... I Karen Terrell surprised the hell out of me. She she hung in there with Gail Kim. I will she give did. her her props. She hung in there with Gail Kim. Yeah, I, I, I think the knockouts match was probably the match of the night, but there was only like two matches I really had a problem with. One uh, was the television title match, because I'm white right when they said Joseph Park was out. I'm like, okay, we know who's winning this shit. Let's just move on to the next one, please. Um, as far as the Sting and Bob Cooley, Ray, I I like the match, but the only thing that made, pissed me off was, yeah, Sting, we all knew Sting wasn't winning this. I mean, 
the, the two high on aces and eights right now, I mean, if it would have been Angle or somebody else, yeah, I would have said Bully could have lost, but not against Sting. Yeah, we all knew, I mean, we knew Sting wasn't going to win that match, but right. it's just a shame that nobody came out and helped. And that was the mark of me. You're like, come on, help Sting. Right. It, as much as everybody bitched about getting jumped, y'all, y'all didn't run out there and help him. Mm-hmm. I mean, the last time, last time I honestly checked, I thought Hulk Hogan pretty much said pretty much it was open season on Aces and Eights. If you want them, go get them. If you want to fight them, go fight them. If you want to beat, beat that ass backstage, beat that ass backstage. It's like the only guys who are actually trying to do any kind of fighting in regards to Aces and Eights has been Kurt Angle and Abyss, and Sting pretty much has already laid, laid, laid it down that he's that he's on he's on. Uh, whole new mission. I mean, is it going to get to that point now where every TNA guy is going to be so jacked up with their own egos that they're not even going to try to sit here and save their own asses? Because right now, Aces and Eights has it set. If Aces and Eights wins, wins that, mount, that mount for glory, here's the biggest question. Is Anderson going to actually sit here and stand by the guy who pretty much sold, sold, sold him down the river every time when they were in Immortal together? Or is he going to look at it as, I haven't been champion for champ, champ, champion for a long, long, long ass time. I got screwed every time I went after, went after that belt after I lost it. I'm telling you, I the belt, the championship changes people's attitude. Friends become enemies. He might decide that hey, it's, when it comes to the title, business is business. Even better, what what exactly is Doc? What's Doc's role at? Because right now, Doc, he may sit here and said, you know, I'm sorry, I'm cool, I'm good, and everything else. But right now, you gotta believe. He's still pissed about the fact that pretty much Anderson got that spot. So, who, what what role is what role is Doc play? We still to this moment don't know who pretty much Malva Glory is in in October. There's still at least a couple of a couple of little pay per view shows before then. What exactly? Who who is who exactly is gonna gonna face face Bully, Bully Ray? Well, That's in the big Remember, day. there aren't any pay per views before then. No, no, they they cut it down to what four pay per views a year. Four pay per views, yeah. They're all so the main pay per views. They got nothing else. Genesis, anniversary, Brown for Glory, and Lockdown are the only four they have. They cut it all of them. So they got so now with, with, when you have less pay per views, this gives you more of an opportunity to build up your feuds between your pay per views. Wait a minute, so I thought can, Hope, hold on, I so thought they got, Hope, they got four, they got four months to get something together. Wait a minute, I thought Hope Coben figured. Uh, Saban gets a uh, TNA title shot at Destination X. Well, oh, he did say that now. They, what they could do is they could simply take an episode of TNA Impact and make it a Destination X show. Yeah, yeah, yeah because... They got to do. Oh, oh wow. that's, the, that's the other wild card, isn't it? Chris Saban. Because now that he's S Division champ, he has that option to either cash in, cash in, and go after the world title or just keep the title and just be happy with that. But I think, honestly, he's thinking if Austin Aries can do it, why can't I? Well, remember, he talked about it earlier tonight when he talked about his injuries and he talked about how his last match before he was hurt was against Austin Aries. And he said, yeah, he's like, if he can go on to win the world title, I know I can. Which I think that's a cool concept because it makes the X Division title that much more important. I wish that they would do something to make TV titles seem more important, like depending on TV. <laughs> right. Hey, speaking of X Division, hey, hey, if you out there listening to this, I would like to send my prayers out to Zima Ion. My and, man. Uh, man he, he's having that surgery done to remove that tumor. And uh, hey, I'd like to extend my prayers to him, man. Uh, get well soon. Get back in that ring because, man, you starting to grow on me. He's just an awesome, awesome competitor. I, I love Zima. He, he's just uh, yeah, Zima, Mike. You know, you know, you know. I got your back. I've been watching you since 2008 on, out there on the indie scene, out there in Elizabeth over at International Wrestling Cartel. So, mm-hmm. always a, a very good guy. So I'm. I hope everything goes well for him. Yeah, you know, I wanted to mention something, something about that. Since you guys I'm going to say something. Um, I hope the guy gets well. I do, but what makes me mad is TNA ain't doing shit for him. It's pretty sad that the fans had right. to take the bill. 
That's pretty fucked up. Even WWE sends their ex stars to rehab if they want it. Come on. Yeah. Right. I've, but Joe, yeah, I've, but I've, I've been on the rant about this already. Go pay Hulk Hogan thirty thousand dollars per appearance. Then. That's yeah. That's BS. Yeah, so you'll pay Hulk Hogan thirty thousand dollars per appearance, but you won't. And, get your, and, you, and another thing that really pissed me off about it is that. They they didn't even make they haven't even they still haven't made no mention of where he is. All the, the last thing they said about him was he was getting his opinions removed. That's it. Right, but they didn't. They, 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 they haven't the, made they haven't made no mention of him. They didn't even make they didn't even make mention that his girlfriend had an online uh, online Kick, uh, Kickstarter campaign for him. Yeah, campaign going for him to to help raise the money. To, yeah, well, Luke, to, to and, he said, out, and then he said out in Chicago. Is having a show where you can either go to the show and pay, or you can order the show online and stream it for like five bucks, and the money goes to Warrior Fit. Like nobody, yeah. is. That, it's a shame, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like, you know, whatever that that doesn't get raised, I feel like TNA should match that because this, like I said before, this is one of your premier guys that you have in your ex division. And like I said, the the company of North, the the E, as I, I'm just gonna say, even they will help their guys out. Like like Doug said, they have programs set up for even if you're not with the company anymore, if you just been with just wrestling with them, even if it was for one month, you are ex employee of their company. You can go to them and go through rehab and get yourself help. I'm sure TNA had no problem helping out Jeff Hardy with his rehab, though. Exactly. And then pushed yeah, him to the world title again. But another yeah, one of you guys... It's me thinking, because we're on this. I remember, too, they didn't help K-Dog either when he had to get surgery done, I think, on his kidneys or something a few years I mean, ago. They didn't help him either. He, didn't he sue them for that? He sued him, but he didn't win in court. Right, because they used the whole, well, you're an independent contract. And that's the shame. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like, it, okay, it's like, okay. It, but you know okay, the thing is, but the thing is, WWE, no team, they neither one of them don't have health issues. They 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 urge them to go get their own health issues. But the th- but the difference between them is if WWE, if one of their premier stars needed it, and I'm pretty sure that Vince and and Trip and them would would definitely help. Because they have the money to do that. These motherfuckers, uh, the Carter, Dixie Carter, they're not wanting for money at all. They should come from a rich fucking family. Right. They're, not wanting, they're not wanting for nothing. But I you got to remember. I mean, but in all that, but the problem is that they're paying big contracts. To the, the former WWE guys get paid the most money in TNA. But you have guys like Zima and all those guys. They get paid on a per appearance basis, and from what I heard, some of them it's only like two hundred bucks. And right. you're on TV. That is, that that's exactly why John Morrison said he would never ever go to TNA because he would make more money on the independent scene than he would with them. That's true. Hey, look, there are certain wrestlers that I said that they made more on the indie scene than they did with WWE, but that's a different story. Yeah, I mean, even Batista and MVP. I know we're getting off subject, but even they said they want to go to TNA either. Right, because they want because it's but but at the same time I don't know why they wouldn't because they'd actually they're the ones who would actually get treated. Right. The well, biggest, the, well, well, you know MVP's been there before, so right, it, 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 it might have been something from before why he would never go back. The only That's reason that pretty that, 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 that pretty much TNA guys leave for WWSP is is the dollar do- signs. That's number one. They want those big bucks so bad that they could taste them when. Physic Man and Triple H waved those nice little big fat juicy juicy con- con- contracts stretching in their faces. They're going to be frogging in the mouth. They're going to drool their asses off. I get right. the whole fact of basically, you know, Ditsy Carter basically, you know, coming from a rich family and everything else. But you got to sit here and understand one simple thing, simple simple thing about TNA. TNA has pretty much done its own its own evolution in a matter of speaking. Because I remember, you know, back in the day when it was TNA Impact, it was one of those shows that I was just now getting getting used to when pretty much they were saluting saluting the late the late Mrs. Mrs. Jeff 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 Jarrett, who pretty much is the main reason why Impact Wrestling probably still exists right now. 
But the biggest right. thing that gets me that the biggest thing that gets me the most is all these superstars who say that they will never wrestle for TNA, but some of these guys are full of shit and they just don't want to actually openly admit it. They, right. I mean, Here's they, what it is. You're trying to keep the door open with WWE. So you're not going to yeah. come out and say you would wrestle for the other guy. Because in the end, everybody wants to be on the big show. Isn't that correct? Everybody wants to be on the big event. Like a but person, look at that. Even a person who plays for the Toronto Argonauts up in the CFL would give that up in a minute to go play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It is what it is because there's more money. I, pretty much, pretty much when, it, when a sister comes down to it, I think, and, I'll, and I know y'all going to dread hearing his name, but I think one person proved flat out he'd rather sit here and sit 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 on the side sidelines and just get paid top dollar than go get paid a mediocre contract contract for something smaller. And that man, shockingly enough, is Tim Tebow. He had a chance to go to a to an arena team in his own in in his own backyard, but chose to wait. And look what happened. He just got signed yeah. with the New England Patriots, and it may it, he, he may make it, he may not, but he had but he had a shot. But the money wasn't there in arena; the money was there in the NFL. And the NFL, that's, yeah. And that's the, the end, harsh you, the, the harsh reality. In the end, these these guys, whether you're a wrestler, football player, whatever, these guys, they're all professionals. And when you're a professional, you're gonna you have to look out for whether you're taking care of your family, whether you're taking care of yourself. You got you got bills to pay. You you can't be playing around. Exactly. TNA, TNA is good for getting you on television and everything. That's great, but unless you have a contract with them, if you're getting paid on a per appearance basis, you might be struggling. And that's why you're wrestling. That's why a lot of these guys, like Chris Saban, in the early days of TNA, Chris Saban was the X Division champion, but he was working at Subway while he was the X Division champion back in the early 2000s. Right. You imagine you see somebody on pay-per-view the next day you walk into a subway out there in Detroit and you say, hey, man, aren't you Chris Saban? Be like, that's no, in- man, I just look like him. <laughs> That'd be like The Rock working at McDonald's or something. Right. Do you smell what I'm cooking back here? <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to order? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I can burn it up and burn my back in that <laughs> It doesn't matter what you want to order. All right, all right. Hey, uh, you can find us at on Twitter at WCC Live. Also, follow us uh, on Facebook. Catch us at Facebook slash groups slash Wrestling Commentary Central. Long ass name. Got to change that. Also, you can hit me up on Twitter at Reddon81. That's R E D D O N 81. Also, catch me on Facebook, my like page. Catch my group's page on, uh, like page on Facebook as well, Men of Passion. Also follow us on Twitter at Men of Passion 12. Hey, hey, let us know where you can find you at. All right, you can find me. You can follow me on Twitter at Booze Ant Cox. You can also check out my weekly columns each and every week at www.kfabekickout.com. Great wrestling site for all the latest news and information on all the going-ons in professional wrestling, whether it's DNA, WWE, Ring of Honor, Japan, Independence, we talk about it all. And uh, don't forget to like the kfabekickout.com like page on Facebook. And you can also follow uh, kfabekickout.com on Twitter. Just look them up. Uh, Hit up the TNA like page on Facebook as well. Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it.